ordinary or extraordinary. I grew up my whole entire life looking at musicians, artists, all the leaders, all the great speakers in the world, thinking that they were completely and totally extraordinary. What made them so extraordinary? Why did I think they were extraordinary? Because I was ordinary. I was just an ordinary girl. I grew up in an ordinary family. I went to an ordinary school. I had ordinary parents, but absolutely amazing parents. And my whole life, I kept thinking, I want to achieve this, I want to be that, I want to... But it took me to the age of 42 to have the realization that there is no difference, absolutely no difference between me and anyone else. Every single person that's born in this, this world, everyone that lives on this planet, we are all extraordinary. But it took a lot of work for me to kind of figure this out. It took a lot of self-belief, something that I did not have. Growing up, I was the most awkward, shy teenager. I would have been burning. If anyone spoke to me, I would have been completely and totally burning on the inside. I would have been shaking. Someone asked me a question. Oh, I felt the worst feeling in the world. But I was always embarrassed, always shy, always sitting in the corner, never wanting to kind of step out, never, wanted, never ever wanting to get up onto a stage to speak. Always, always thought, that wasn't for me, that's not me. I'm not extraordinary. Why would anybody want to hear me speak? So I had to then learn myself. I had to teach myself step by step how to believe in myself, how to, how to put myself out there, not to stress, not to worry, not to be afraid of anything. So the years I spent when I was younger, living my life how I thought every single person wanted me to live. I would have done things to please everyone else. I would have went out of my way. I would have like, let myself down and I would have let maybe my family down to please someone else. It meant absolutely nothing. So from this day onwards, I made a decision. I easily, about in my mid to early 20s, I made a decision that I wanted to be extraordinary. I wanted to stand up here. I wanted to be able to express and talk quite effectively to everybody and pass on what I know and what I want everyone to know. That if I can stand and I can feel like this, if I can be extraordinary, you can be extraordinary. So instead of living the life that I thought, thought other people wanted me to live, I started living the life that I wanted. I started looking within, instead of looking without. I comp continuously looked without. I looked for everyone else to make me happy. And then I had to stop, take a breath, and look within. And if I can make myself happy, once I am happy, everything outside of me then, everything, everyone attached to me is happy. Because if I'm not happy, it just doesn't work. So instead of searching for approval from other people, instead of worrying about other people's opinions, instead of thinking all these crazy thoughts, you had a whole, I had a whole story built up in my head about this person thinks this, they're going to think that, they're going to think... Continued a huge cycle, went round and round and round. So I stopped it, and I stopped it then. Instead of being told all about the laws and regulations when we were growing up, we were taught you have to do this, you have to go to school, you have to learn this lesson, you have to wear this uniform. And then in religion, we were told we had to say this prayer, that prayer. And even when we got older, you went on social media, the laws and regulations then, you were recommended to follow this page, or you were recommended to like this page. That's not the laws that I follow. Believe me, yes, you need guidance, you need to, you need to follow law, of course, but there's universal laws in life. And these universal laws are the laws that I follow. They don't take into consideration creed, color, nationality. They don't take in gender, race. That doesn't matter because we are all completely and totally equal and exactly the same. We are all extraordinary. There's not one person as ordinary. And once we start to believe this, once we start to realize that we are not put into different categories, we are not different, even age groups, even gender, everything, there's no difference. It doesn't matter. So for me to be, it's unique, extraordinary, and we're all spiritual beings. And this is all down to universal laws. 
Being ordinary is absolutely great. It is great. But being extraordinary, that's life-changing. It is my life completely turned upside down, inside out. And that's whenever I had the realization that I am extraordinary. And it's not, nothing to do with monetary, wealth, material things. It's got nothing to do with that at all. It's got to do with belief and the faith. And you're giving out the most kind. As long as you think good and you bring it back to you again. So for me, the faith and inner belief and something greater out there. There's something greater out there than every one of us. And it's all within our reach. It's all there. And the knowledge that you can be the best version of you. And there's only a few simple steps. It's simple steps of being that wee tiny bit grateful, starting off with wee small things. And gratitude changed, changes everything. Like, when did you ever think that you turned on a tap of water? Are you grateful for that water coming out of it? Because I, honest to God, I wasn't. At the time, I didn't, I didn't think anything of it at all. But I started being grateful for all those wee small, tiny things. Tiny things to me, but massive things to other people. So I wake in the morning, and every morning, and I'd be grateful that I have opened my eyes, that I have opened my eyes to live another day in this wonderful world. I want to be here to help as many people as I possibly can, to show people that there is more to life, and stop sweating the small stuff. Every morning I would wake up, I'm going right, it is just the most fantastic day, whether it's raining, hailing, snowing, it doesn't matter. It's just great to open your eyes and live another day. And you see that there is, this, there is an easier way to life. There's this, such an easier way to life. So once you stop sweating the small stuff, and I can guarantee, see the small thing, or the massive large thing that you think that you're worrying about, as something small to someone else. And some, something really, really small. And you give it a few, even years. I went, something, I went through something a couple of years ago, and it was huge at the time. It almost ended me being here, because I thought it was so huge. And now I can look back and I can say it was tiny, it was so small. But that's all down to the law of relativity. And that is one of the universal laws I live my life by. And that would be, it is not big and it's not small. It is just, it is just it. It is, is that's it. It's not big, not small. It's big in comparison to something else smaller, or it's small in comparison to something else bigger. And that's the way we have to look at it. So it's not big, not small, and it just is. And then leave it at that. That's all you have to do. So I have a choice every morning I get up in the morning. I have a choice whether I want to come out, whether I want to be in a good day or a bad day. I have a choice whether I want to worry about this or worry about that, or not think about it at all. I had that choice when I wake up in the morning. Now, you get up in the morning, you can have the whole ability to say that you want to have the best day, and then a knock-on effect. It's as if the universe is trying to stop you having a good day. Your alarm might not turn on in the morning. Or, my favorite, your six-year-old might not want to put on her tights to wear to school. She doesn't like them. Or you go out, get into the car, and the car doesn't start. So you have all this here, you have all these different things that could be knocking on, but it's not about those things happening. It's about how you, as a person, deals with that. Well, you react to that or you respond to that. Responding takes time to stop and think. And you go, OK, why does she not want to put on those tights? How is she feeling? What's happening in this car? Stop, take a deep breath. This is maybe stopping me from something else happening down the line. Whereas you react, you just go straight in, react, boom, and the whole thing explodes. For me, the old me, I would have reacted every single time. I would have threw the hissy fit, the whole house would have been all over the show. No matter what happened, I reacted nine times out of ten. And that's no good, that is just, it was no good for me, it was no good for how I felt. And then once I learned then to change all that, it completely transformed for me. To respond, as I say, it takes time to think. Because no matter what it is, you respond, I would have blamed everybody. Everybody. 
because it was never, ever, ever my fault. And then whenever you take responsibility for yourself, and it's not anybody else's fault, whenever you take responsibility, everything starts to flow, and it flows so smoothly and so well. And then things just seem to happen the way you want it to. So for me, I had to stop blaming other people, worrying about other people's opinions, because other people's opinions, they are the most, yeah, they're the most damaging thing that you can let onto yourself. But that person's probably not even thinking along the lines of what you're thinking. As I say, you had the whole thing, I had the whole movie played out in my head. But above all, I always remember that no matter what you put out to that, the world, it doesn't matter what it is, no matter what it is, whether it's thoughts, words, feelings, actions, that's going to come back round at you again. And I'll tell you, I want it to come back in the best possible way. I don't want to have to be sitting, worrying, thinking something negatively, and then waiting, right, when's it going to come back, when's it going to come back? It might not come back straight away, but it'll come back. And that's all down to the law of thinking. And that's another of the universal laws I live my life by. So what you think, what you act, how you act, every action that you take, make sure it's a good one. Because once your heart is right, and if your heart is right, your head is sure to follow. Yeah, it has to follow. So I know in my head, in my thoughts, in my thinking, I try every day and do the best that I possibly can for everybody involved. And all I can do and say is stop sweating the small stuff. Take every single day at a time. And are we going to now just stay and live this ordinary life or take that huge leap and that step and live the life, the extraordinary life that every single person deserves?